So welcome to Ways Out Back. So in this episode, I want to give you a tour of my cargo trailer to camper conversion. I know I mentioned before that we were going to wait until all of the details were done inside, but we are in a beautiful setting here. We're just outside Zion National Park. We're dispersed camping up in the mountains. We can see the park from here. It is beautiful. And I thought, what better uh, spot to do a tour? So let's get started. Uh, I want to show you, first of all, around the outside and then the inside. Now this is going to be a little bit uh, longer of a video, but if you want a short, quick tour, check out the link above or the link in the description. And what I'll do in there is I'll give you a short one minute tour of the cargo trailer. But let's get started into the in-depth one. So first off, let's talk about the outside. So this trailer started its life as a 6x10 cargo trailer. It was my old construction trailer I used for work all the time. It's an Amerilite, which is a very, very light cargo trailer. I think the, the total weight of this all included, once it was all done, was about 998 pounds. So it was just under 1,000 pounds. So I took that trailer and we cut the back off of it. Let me show you. So here's a little better view of what I did. Is right from about here, I cut the back of the 6x10 off and I widened it seven inches on each side. And then I added 22 inches on the back here. So this is where the original frame, the original frame ends here. And I just came up, it was about a 30 degree angle up to here. And then I just added this on. You can see the top, how it's added. So a couple reasons why I did that is first of all, we wanted to sleep this way in here. And I also wanted a little bit extra room on the back, but I didn't want to buy a seven by 12 for a few reasons. First off, I didn't want the tires to be on the outside. So you know how a seven foot cargo trailer, it's seven foot all the way and then plus the tire, so it'd be much wider. This way I could build the box over top the, tr the tire and still keep a shorter, a narrower wheelbase. I also wanted my approach angle to not be lost. So the 12 foot long, it would end out here somewhere and then I'd lose that approach angle. So that's why I picked specifically the six by 10. Now, first off, before I added this section on here, I used it as a six by 10 camper for a couple of years. We loved it, but it was pretty tight. And like I mentioned, I wanted to make these few modifications. So if you wanted to see that uh, tour, if you take a look up here, I'll link to the original six by 10 and you can check that out. So on the outside here, you'll see a few things. First off, I've got two water tanks in this trailer. On this side, I've got a 20 gallon. On the other side, I've got a 30 gallon fresh water tank. Then if you notice, there's a vent here. This is for my on-demand hot water heater in there. I've just got one of those small propane on-demand hot water heaters. We can go inside, I'll show you that. The exhaust pipe for my diesel heater. The tires on this trailer are uh, 31 by 10 and a half. They're, they're the same, actually my truck's a little bit bigger, but very, very close. So I use the same spare for both trailer and truck. The rims, Ford Ranger rims. So they, they fit right on my Ford Ranger truck. To make these tires fit, I originally had to run spacers, one inch wheel spacers. But then when I did this box here, uh, I ended up widening the axle. So I just got a wider axle built. So I added that one inch on either side to get the height, the clearance here, the, the bigger tires help for sure. I think right now I've got about 22 inches, maybe 23 inches clearance, but I flipped the axle underneath the leaf spring. So when I got the new axle built, I got them to weld the pads on top of the axle. And that's where I got the clearance. The windows themselves, these are the kind of windows I really like. We were looking at those side sliding windows, but I don't like the fact that when you have them open, all the water can come in. You gotta, you gotta put something to stop the water from coming in. Whereas these ones, they just open up. The bottom part portion is an awning window. And I just got them used. So everything that you see here is done quite cheaply. The windows on either side and the back window is all from a used salvage place. The metal that I used here, same thing. It was from a trailer used salvage place. The diamond plating, same thing. And then I just took it and I bent it and stuck it on there, glued it. 
These are the original fenders. I basically just cut them, widened them, and then glued them, riveted them, glued them back in there. Here, let me show you the front tongue. So up front here, I just mounted one of these cargo boxes. And it kept it fairly light. And in this cargo box, but I've got my diesel tank, my diesel pump is back there, my propane regulator, and my propane tank. And it's all bolted down in here. On the front of the tongue, I've just got a swivel jack here, and then just my um, sway control that I got bolted on there. Here's the jacks I use. I use these smaller ones up front. I've got to extend it, but I'm still I'm just using blocks for now. And then on the back, I'm using these jacks here. So there's the underneath of the trailer. You can see I ran most of my wiring through this conduit. I've installed a shock kit for the axle. And then you can see my propane up there going up into the trailer. And then that, that there's my diesel heater. There's the air intake. I just built a little deflector so the dirt doesn't get into it. And then the exhaust. And this is my insulation. So it's got two inches of insulation in the bottom and an inch of insulation in all the walls and in the ceiling. One thing that I really like about this trailer too and, and specifically why I built it is I don't have any tanks hanging down. There's nothing that's going to get damaged, but especially because of our winter camping, there'll be nothing that'll get frozen. So there's no water that's down under here, just drains that come through. Like here you can see the drain for the tank there. But there's no, no water pipes or anything down here that's going to freeze. Let me show you up top. So up top, you can see I've got my two solar panels. These are 170 watt each. They're shingled solar panels. So they're, they produce a little bit more um, wattage for the size. I highly recommend shingled compared to the conventional solar panels. My, my fan and vent, and then my little wood stove. I know it's low, but it actually draws very good. I haven't had any problems with it not drawing. And that way I can just pop that top off, put the cap on, and I'm ready to go. Sorry about the reflection of the sun here, but... So on this side you can see I've got my outside light there. Above that I've got a Smitty built awning. And then a grab handle, I installed that. There's my water fill for the 30 gallon tank over here. Back there is, I've got a few things back here. This is my 120 volt plug-in. This charges my batteries and provides 110 inside. And then this is just tied into the battery. So this could be like if you, I use it to power a transfer pump to fill my tanks from streams or from lakes, but you could tie it into your solar system or whatever, but that's what that's for there. I've got these flip down solid steps here. They're 28 inch. And then the door itself is just an RV door that I cut down. So I just cut the bottom off it. That's why the handle's so close to the bottom there. And you can see where I filled. This is where the original door was. And then I put this piece of metal. This is all the metal from the back here. So I put that in there and then welded in a frame around the door and put the door in. Let's go inside. So one thing I liked with the RV door is that it came with a screen. So it's got these screens built in. So again, same thing. I just cut it off, cut it down. And then you've got this nice little screen here. Okay, let's go in. I'll just show you around a little bit and then I'll explain what I did. Okay, so we're back here. So this is what is opposite to the door when you walk in. So we've got a 12 volt fridge here. It's, I think it's 3.8 cubic foot or 3.5. In here is where my hot water tank is. Remember that vent outside? 
We'll get into that in a bit. Cupboard. Down here, I've got a six gallon gray water tank and my diesel heater side by side. Here's my two burner. This is just a Flame King Amazon stove. Love it. Works great. Little sink, hot and cold, obviously. This metal here, the backsplash that I used, is just the metal off of the outside from the existing trailer. That's flipped around. That's the back side of the metal, the aluminum. Here's all my gauges. So here's all my switches. And then I've got my solar controller, uh, my tanks, the level tank level, pump. And then I've got this little gauge that monitors battery out, battery in. But you can see right now in the sun how much we're getting. So that's the percentage of the batteries after running it all night. And if we just go to amps. So we're, um, right now I'm getting almost nine amps from the solar. My diesel heater, the control for that. And then on the side, this is the switch for the lights. And then they're dimmable. You just put your finger on it, hold it, goes up. And then a plug here. So there's a USB-C and a USB. That's the little under cabinet lights that I've been using, three of them there. Here's the drawer. This is our silverware. So we pretty much carry, yeah, just silverware and whatever things we need for cooking. Go here, little spice rack. Up top is the cabinet for my food. So this is where we store our food and also then down here a little bit, but more pots and pans down there. We'll show you that in a second. All the cabinet doors, they're on, they've got these shocks to hold them open. And these are self-closing hinges. So it actually holds the door. There's no latches or anything. It holds it solid. Fans right above the cooking area. And also when we're showering, usually what I'll do with the shower, I bring air in because I want to create like a power vent, like I want to power vent my hot water tank here. We'll get into that in a second. So underneath the sink here, we've got uh, this cupboard, pretty big cupboard. You can see my accumulator for my water pressure, hot and cold lines, sink obviously just drains. I've got a six gallon uh, gray tank under here and my diesel heater. This opens up and under there, here I'll just show you a few of the building pictures, but you can see there's a valve there and you shut that valve and then it just goes into the gray tank. You open the valve and then it drains out. On the gray tank, I put a clean out up top and this shelf right here pops out. So you can pop this shelf out, clean out the gray tank when you need to do that. I've also set it up, I haven't built it yet, but I've added an extra line here. It runs all the way through into here and I'm gonna drop it into this little pickup and then what I can do is I can just pump my shower water back and into my gray tank. Say if we're camping at Walmart or something, I can still have showers. Okay, this is our my hot water tank, it's in here. So this is the side view of the hot water tank. Just got a piano hinge on there, a little magnet, and I'm running this little computer, computer fan. And what this computer fan does is it brings air in. What I was having happen here is because of the wind blowing through, sometimes it would shut off my hot water tank when you're showering, which is not too fun. So this way it pressurizes it and forces the air up and out. And that keeps, no matter which way the wind's blowing, it'll always vent out that side. So that's controlled by switch up there, flip the switch on, turns that fan on. So my shower, I use just FRP paneling. So this is all just FRP and it's a 24 by 27 shower pan. And this just drains outside right now. So that just goes straight through it outside. How I did my hot water tank. So this is a boat hatch here. And I wanted to be able to access the, the hot water tank from the inside so you can set the temperatures. So to make these tanks work well, don't run a mixing valve on them. You just got to come out straight hot. So you can see up here, here's my, my water line coming from in that cabinet up. 
and then I've just got a shut off valve here and it's just one line up to my shower head up there and that makes it work well because you got full flow of your water through it then because of the really extremely cold cl uh, camping I do I've set this up I actually lost one of these first because of the cold getting in here and freezing the coil that's up top here so what I've done is you can see up in there like a dust wastegate that I can open and close that closes that vent to the outside and then what I do is so when it's really cold like last night it was 30 degrees it was below freezing anyways and so I close that wastegate to keep the cold air from coming in I shut off this valve this is the water into this tank and then I've got two drains this is drains the cold water side and then here this drains the hot water side so you can see how they're both open right now and they just go right through the floor so I open those up it drains all the water out of my tank here and then there's no freezing that's going to happen up here no matter how cold it is but then when we want to shower you can open that up close that those two valves and then you can have nice hot showers in here so that's my boat hatch there and that seals everything up for when you're showering here's looking at the front of the trailer so up front uh, we've got our little porta potty here I'm probably going to put a composting toilet in here eventually and then just some shelves that we use for whatever we got there up here we've got our towels first aid kit just maybe I'll mention this this is just a uh, PVC shower curtain that I made here and then these are just pipe holders so you can get one inch pipe holders and it fits the three-quarter PVC perfectly and then obviously just shower rings and there's the shower head holder here that's just a flexible one and then the soap dispensers really like those things carbon monoxide alarm and then a light here light on the other side this is we just got a few plates and stuff up here this area right here we're going to work on this is going to be my next project i'm going to make this a little more efficient right now it's got this little fold down table which is nice we can fold down the table here and then while you're you're prepping you've got that extra space but I want to make this more into a closet space so I'm gonna put I think a rod in here with some hangers and then have some hooks also and then a, a little bigger of a shelf here's where the wiring comes through from the trailer so this is the seven pin from the trailer goes out through the floor there into that conduit and then up to the tongue and then this runs my my wires and also uh, there's the conduit that runs to the back remember I showed you that underneath so that runs all the way along the bottom to the back and so that provides um, the connection there a couple vents for my fridge to make that work again that's a diesel heater in the back you can see so here's the setup with the bed down And this is just a queen mattress. It's an Amazon queen foam mattress that I cut up and made into cushions. And we'll show you that. We'll, I'll flip, set up the table and I'll set up the, um, the benches there. A couple bo boxes just to hold our pillows and whatever else. Just some Ikea shelves for our iPad, stuff like that. Again, these are just used windows. This is a fire escape window. So there's the latch there. You pull that latch, the whole thing opens up wanted a, a big window at the back for a couple reasons first of all for the light and for the view but also to get out because right here we've got our little wood stove so this is a cubic mini wood stove and then it's got it's a really good pipe it's a double wall pipe and then this is all insulated up here right now this thing's running and I can hold it. it it doesn't even get that hot it's amazing just put a little bit of metal on here just in case and then the metal ring there but that heats this little trailer up so it's boiling we got all the windows open even the door just to cool it down really nice little thing eventually I'm thinking I might make a little wood box back here this is just again the metal from the back of the trailer from the sides I just use three quarter inch plywood and then just bent this over top of it and then I put this little chest drawer in here so in here 
is kind of all our electronics, just a catch-all it seems. But I put a USB charger in here so I can charge my, my drone, my cameras, whatever. I can just plug it in there, close that, and it's all, it, it's not going to get damaged. Up front, this is just flips down, a little drawer here. So you can access that side or in this side normally I've got wood stacked in here right now but obviously when when I go and put that wood box here I'm not going to need this anymore. And then down below it this again this is my 30 gallon tank back here but down here I've got my propane alarm there. And then on the side here this is just the tools for the cubic mini and then we've got basically just tons of dog food a little bit of alcohol here so this is the tank there you can see the tank the drain the water I tried to angle all my water lines so that I it would all angled down to the tank so when I drain it I can drain the whole thing without having them freeze and then there you can see that there's the propane monitor Okay, let's set up this table here. So here's how the table gets set up. So I've just got about two of these legs for RVs. It's got the little base there. I don't know if you can kind of see, that's the 45 tube at the back. You can see how it goes up. And then I've got this tube where I run all the wires and the plumbing through. But these legs, they just snap right into the table here. So a guy on Etsy makes these little holders. and they just hold your legs right there. So we take that out, put it in here, and then we just put the table right on top of there. Eventually I want to stain this table the same color as my countertop. Yeah, there's the table, I just cut it out here to get around it. But there's lots of room. You could probably fit six people in here, no problem. Let's sit down. So it kind of gives you a view. You can see that it's a real nice big window. You can see the size of the table. It's bigger than the table and it's huge. It's the full height and it's got the windows on the side and here's kind of the view if you're sitting in the table looking to the front of the trailer. Let me show you what's in the benches, what's in each bench. To do that, I'm just gonna take this table right out of here and then we'll, we'll have a better view. So here's the driver's side bench first. So in here, I've got my water pump, little water filter here. And then this is the selector. So that's my right tank, my left tank. I can just decide which tank I want to draw from. You can see my tank under here. So I've got it reinforced with um, this three quarter inch plywood and then I bolted it all down and then here's all the wires the plumbing everything runs along here through that tube in the back over to the other side and I got still quite a bit of storage in here okay let's look at this side this is the side where I got my batteries and electronics okay, so you can see my 30 gallon tank right in here goes and fits right in there and then I've got four of these um, six volt deep cycle batteries there's you can't see the fourth one it's back there it's underneath the, this bench thing so there's four here though you have to trust me and so that gives me quite a bit that that's 232 you times it by four divide it by two because it's uh, you, you're, we're running 12 volt here, not six volt. And then here I've got my fuse panel. This is the shunt for my amp meter. Fuse, obviously, shut off. And then this is the shut off for my solar. On the back here, I've got my solar controller here. And then this is the plug that goes to the outside. That's the 110 volt plug. And it just runs into this uh, power bar here. So this power bar, it's got surge protection and also um, 
GFCI, so in case the campground you plug in isn't uh, fused or isn't wired properly. This is my little Norco battery charger, 10 amp battery charger, and it's just wired right into my batteries. So as soon as I plug this in, it turns on my, my charger and I can start charging my batteries. I also have a 12 volt DC to DC charger built into my truck and with the solar so this is this never goes dead I never have to worry about batteries at all so that's it we're gonna wrap this video up I hope you enjoyed it uh, I hope I covered everything that you wanted to see if not post it below I try to answer everybody's comments and I'll try and get back to you let you know maybe some information that I missed and again to just a reminder I do have a downloadable guide so if you'd like to if you're thinking about building a tr cargo trailer to a camper conversion check out that guide it's fifteen dollars there it's a step-by-step -step. it covers a lot of things i wish i would have known when i was building this trailer and a lot of good principles to follow so that you can have a trailer that you're very comfortable comfortable towing like this trailer we've towed now probably over three thousand miles and we've got another two thousand miles to go and no problems it's been great thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one like and subscribe for more videos to come, especially using this trailer in our winter camping and dispersed camping, that's what I built it for. But follow along for more videos to come.